question I always have is what's the guy using for equipment to get what it is that he's showing us? And so today we're going to go through the bag and have a look at the basic setup for doing this new music video shoot. This is probably the most important one. I got two of these Canon M50 cameras, mirrorless cameras, about $700 Canadian. And they come with a 15 to 45 zoom lens on them, which is fairly, it's okay, but it's fairly useless for if you're trying to do anything really nice. But the great thing about these is the articulating screen, the mirrorless body is so tiny and they'll shoot 4K, but you don't want to. We're shooting at everything at 1080p. Um, HD because that's really good for you like YouTube and that kind of stuff we don't need to go to 4k at this point it's a lot easier to keep it 1040p because all of the cameras and stuff that we're using other people's cameras as well iPads cell phones whatever uh, can handle the 10 or 1080p real easy and then we can edit in 1080p too on an iPad which will be a lot less uh, processor intensive than than editing at 4k so the other cool thing about these cameras you can stick it out in front of you and you have a good vlogging camera. On the run, you can vlog, you can show stuff. I love just moving around when I'm working on my car projects or whatever with this camera. The lens I have on here right now is actually a macro lens for doing real close-ups. And it's got this fascinating little light on the front here that you can turn on high, medium, off. And the deal is that when you're you know, taking a, 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 a macro picture of something, you, you can spin this to super macro, uh, turn the light on, and you can get a very detailed shot of things. Oh, now you'll be able to unlock my iPad. We won't talk about audio equipment in this video because we're doing a music video shoot and the audio is none of our business. So in the bag, lenses for this camera, besides this macro, here is a 55 to 200 millimeter zoom. Really cute lens by Canon. Uh, I like it. Um, there's a lot of really neat effects you can do. Flattens the picture right from, from near to far because it's zoomed in. Let's see, we've got a 30 millimeter Sigma. This is an F1.4. Um, I've also got a 16 millimeter Sigma that's on that camera right now. They're beautiful lenses because they are 1.4 f-stop so you can open them right up and get a lot of blurred background. Also when shooting with these kind of lenses, you know 1.4 and you want that short depth of field but if you're in bright light you need to use ND filters. Okay and all ND filters do is limit the amount of light coming in so if you're shooting out in a bright sun or whatever in a bright light and you want to get a short depth of field you need to limit the light so you can open up your lens put an ND filter on, open up the lens more, and you get that short depth of field that you're looking for, blur the background. By the way, I never use lens covers uh, because they're a nuisance for a number of reasons. Just use a good UV filter. And for that, you also need to have some cleaning stuff that's over there in the bag as well. Now, here we go, back in time, 70D. I love this camera. I used to really love it. <laughs> it's, it's just so huge now. And it's also a crop sensor camera. So, you know, it seemed small when I bought it. This got a nice 18 to 135 millimeter lens on it with tremendous um, optical stabilization. And they're all good autofocus. Of course, these new ones are quicker now than the old ones. But this one here, I was really impressed with it. It still works well for autofocus. Same thing, articulating LCD screen. And with other lenses on this one, I have got a wide angle. This is a 10 to 22, which is a really cool one for getting a, a wide angle shot, very dramatic shot. This is a, the zoom telephoto 55 to 250. I, I don't like this lens a lot. It's a Canon lens, but it's really not that sharp of an image. Everybody should have one of these. This is just a 50 millimeter lens for this camera, or it works the same as that 30 millimeter lens on the M50. Um, which gives you like your basic f flat focal length for portraits and stuff. It's absolutely beautiful. And the other thing is there's an adapter that you can get that will adapt any of these big camera lenses onto the M50. That's a, a, a good way to save money on lenses. And I did that to begin with. I used this lens, 50 millimeter, with this adapter. 
on my M50 and it worked wonderfully, um, but I just found it more convenient then to get move up to the, the Sigma one with the 30 millimeter. This lens often has a problem in that the um, part of the focusing ring inside will get bent. And so maybe once every 10, 12 years, you have to take it apart and straighten those out and put it back together so that it will auto focus again. Um, other thing, you got lots of batteries. Keep your batteries charged all the time. We got SD cards in there and so on. In the top here, always carry an umbrella or two. And not only for when it's raining, but when it's bright sun, because if it's bright sun out and you're shooting, you can't really see the LCD because it's just too bright. So it's great to have a cover over top of you to do that. I mean, you can use a piece of black cloth or whatever. Lens cleaner, lens cloth, very important. You got to keep these clean, things clean all the time, especially if you're running around with a bunch of guys who've never done much photography before. Inevitably, they're touching the lenses with their fingers. And by the way, I don't use lens caps. I just use the UV filters on the lenses. The lens caps are a nuisance. For one thing, you turn it on, the lens cap's on, of course you see nothing but black. You take the lens cap off, the whole thing flares, trying to find its light. It's just a nuisance. So um, a good UV filter, and that's all you need. You keep it in a camera bag, uh, you know, and then make sure you can clean them. You're gonna have to keep them clean anyway. And then junk, you know, people find something. This looks really important. I have no idea what it is, but it must be important. So put it in the camera bag. Um, the next camera is the GoPro. Love this one. We just did a video on it. You can watch that. And the GoPro mounts kind of stuff that I have. There's a big clamp here. You can clamp this GoPro to pretty well anything. This is a suction cup. Works really well. These are old. I've had these for a while. Works great on the gas tank of my motorbike or on the windshield of my Jeep. And, um, and then the latest invention is this pole, uh, which is just a painter's pole. And you can stick the GoPro on the top of it. I don't know, we just fixed up a little mount. And then you can run this out like really far, right? Three lengths. And you can actually do pseudo drone shots with this. Um, not only does it work well in water, it does well with the slow motion because of the 240 frames per second, but you can mess around with this camera. You can put it in places you can't put other cameras and do things with it. And the stabilization, of course, is absolutely amazing. Those are kind of the, the workhorses, you know, the necessary parts. And then you come to the fun stuff. And there's, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can add on to get um, effects and so on. I've got a, a DJI Mini 2 drone. This is an awesome little drone. Of course, it's the less than 250 gram one, so you don't need a license. Bought it in Canada, brought it with me to Thailand. And it shoots 4K as well. Does a great job with 1080p, of course. I've also got some ND filters for it. Little tiny guys that go on the front of that camera. I had to buy an old iPhone so that I have something to control it with. And that's for fun, right? I think in this music video, we'll have probably maybe two or three drone shots and that's it. But like I say, you could simulate those with the GoPro on that long pole nearly as easily. This thing here is kind of a, a cute little rig. It's just a tractor, I guess. You mount a camera on top of that and it'll go in a straight line or in a curve or whatever. It goes backwards, forwards, and it's got like three different speeds. So basically what you're going to do with this is get a slider shot. And I use it on a piece of glass all the time because if it's really smooth, it does look like a slider. But if it's going over bumps, nah. <laughs> okay, $50 on Amazon, little tractor thing. Then the other deal is all of the little mounts and stuff that you want to have. Besides just for the GoPro, we use these mounts for the Canon M50. Uh, I've got several of these little ball mounts. They're really a really good thing because as you notice, there's one on, on here as well. One of these ball mounts so you can set it up and adjust it to, to wherever you need it to, to point to and you know, works really good. So. All kinds of little gear like that. I've got a lot of different mounts and stuff that I've made. And then, of course, there's tripods. Manfrotto fluid head. I like this tripod. It's really good when you're doing smooth pans and stuff. And um, with this video shoot, the music video shoot, we are trying to have every shot from a tripod or from a gimbal. I've also got a gimbal here somewhere. It's a very important part of what we're doing. And um, then we've got some of these little tripods you can just stick up here and there and everywhere for still shots. Yeah, so the cat's out of the bag. And if you've got any questions on the equipment and why we do it, why do we use these cameras instead of a cell phone? Aren't cell phones just as good? They're better for some things. 
These are better for other things, particularly when you want to change lenses, get some different effects, get some different shots. You can get a lot more dramatic effects and shots out of these cameras and these lenses than you can with a, a cell phone or you know a mobile device. But on the other hand, the mobile device will go in places where these won't. And um, they're handy, they're in your pocket all the time, so we do use a fair amount of that. I'm shooting from my iPad right now uh, because they're just really handy and they work good. And that's it, here we go shooting great video.